All right, so what does the software do? I'd like to start with saying what the software doesn't do. And Udo Kelly had a great uh, quote in one of the first volumes on qualitative data analysis software. He says, the central analytic task in qualitative research, understanding the meaning of text, cannot be computerized. Meaning, you will have to do the analysis yourself. The software does not analyze. It helps you facilitating your analysis, but it does not analyze. What it does is it helps you in organizing your data. It helps you in annotating your data, searching through your data and finding pieces of data, and it displays data. And with display, for example, I mean um, quantified charts or networks of codes, but also export. I count export as a form of display, which is really, really important, especially if you are used to or if you prefer reading text on paper and not on a screen. It's very, very important when you evaluate a software that if you have the preference of reading or doing certain things on, tech, on paper, that you look at the export functions. Okay. Organization. Basically, what you do with QDA software, you put your data into a database. All of your data ideally lives then in one place. You take your documents, for example, your interview data, you import it into a project file, and from now on, that data lives in that project file. That means you have everything stored in one place. Of course, that comes with the caveat of having everything in one place is also a bit dangerous, so you have to have really good backup habits when you use software. Because ideally, you would always use the software as the home base for your data. Every time you get data out of your, uh, every time you want data, you get it out of your database, not from files all over your computer. The great thing about QDA software is that it allows you to organize your data in different folders. It also allows you to add metadata to your, for example, newspaper articles. If you have a bunch of newspaper articles, you can attach where they have been published, uh, what kind of newspaper it is, maybe the author, maybe the age of the author, maybe whether it's a blog entry or if it's a paper-based journal. And you can later use those um, metadata to find certain parts of your data. For example, if I want to see what has been published between 2011 and 2012 about hydrofracking in blogs that were published out of Wisconsin as opposed to Iowa. And then you can go through the topics that you used by, uh, that you applied by coding, for example, and you can get very specific parts of your data. But I'm actually already stepping ahead here. But the, the main part here, and I think that's the main function of, of, of QDA software, is that it really helps you organize your data in one place. And that it helps you attach extra information to it that is later than searchable. The second major part, or the second major role that qualitative data analysis can play in your research is the role of annotation. It's an annotation tool. And roughly speaking, and without getting into too much methodological terminology, there's basically two ways of annotating your data. One is by expanding your data, meaning writing about your data, creating new data that is your analytic work, and by reducing data, which is often called coding. But you could also call it tagging, highlighting, or putting things into different boxes. And I'll first talk about this putting things into different boxes. Basically, what you do is you have your data. It could be, for example, transcribed interview data. And you take a certain part of this data, and you put it into a box. For example, everything in my newspapers that has to do with hydrofracking, then everything that has to do with health concerns goes in a different box. So later I can say, oh, show me everything that has to do with health concerns in those news articles. And the great thing is that I can actually code overlapping. So I don't have to put one thing into one box. One piece of data can be in many boxes. So you can say, show me all the newspapers where Republican politicians are quoted in the context of health concerns of hydrofracking versus the Democrats. So you can then do, you can basically take your um, data apart, and you can fragment it. So that's actually a great strength, because you can access things in a very, very precise way. 
that comes with the problem, with the potential problem that you're also fragmenting your data. Because you might only look at certain segments of data, not anymore at a whole interview, only at snippets. So the practice of coding in QDA software is really, really crucial. Because if you code too long, your, your snippets are too big that they're not meaningful anymore. They don't save you any time. But if they're too short, they're meaningless because meaning comes from context. And without context, it's very, very tough to make any claims about a meaning of an utterance or of a piece of data. Okay, so that's the reduction part, the coding part. Um, the annotation part, and that's another very, very great feature about QDA software, is that your analytic thoughts, which is symbolized by the small couple of bars here, you can attach your analytic thoughts directly to the data in terms of, in, in, uh, in the form of memo, memos, for example. So if I have an idea about this yellow part of data here, I can write it down and I can stick it very closely there so I'm only one click away from my data. So when I review my thoughts or my analytic results, I'm really, really close to my data itself so I can go back to my data. So it really is a great writing tool. It's a great tool for um, keeping your process close to the data that drives that process. And you can attach memos not only to text or to original data, you can also attach memos, for example, to your coding boxes. So you could, for example, make a code about health risks in your um, text that you, or in your, in your research project that you do about hydrofracking. So you take, maybe you have in that box all the snippets that are about health risks, and you can then summarize those snippets, and you can attach that summary onto the box. So you can always then look into the box and look at the snippets again. So it helps you engage with your data and with your thoughts. And I've already talked about the finding aspect of this. This is really where you save time. I'll talk about this in a second too, but you should not expect to save any time using QDA software. The only part of your analysis where you can actually save time is, by, is when you find things when you look for things. You can really easily tell the program to f go through your data according to your codes, because that's what your codes are. You're building an index of your data, and you can use that index to find certain things. That's where you save time. But of course, you can do much more sophisticated searches, and that's great, so you might actually not save time because you're able to do more things. So. If you're thinking about using QDA software as a means of cutting off a couple of hours every week of your analysis work, I would um, be very cautious with that. You're probably going to spend more time. And especially if you haven't used a program before, there's a learning curve. It's like, it's like with everything. The second time around, you know so much more about it. So, I'm not discouraging you from using it, but I'm just saying in the, in the long run you might save time, but in the beginning you will not save time. Okay, the last part is the display. Like I said, you can, in most softwares, they have certain mapping tools, so you can have your, your data kind of mapped out, so you can take snippets of text, you can take codes, you can take analytic thoughts, memos, and connect them on a visual, yeah, on a mind map. And, the cool thing is that these mind maps are interlinked with your data. So again, you look at your mind map and you double click on an item and you'll get maybe directly to that passage of text or you get directly to that memo. So that's a really nice feature. Another form of display that's very common is the quantification of your coding work typically. Um, now we're getting away a little bit from qualitative analysis because counting code occurrences is not really qualitative analysis proper. Um, however, it can be very valuable, especially if you have data that is more structured. Uh, in a biographical interview, it might not be as valid as in a Qualtrics survey that is more structured. But you can actually use these tools, not necessarily for as analytic results, but you can use these visualization tools as excellent ways of seeing your data in a different way. For example, I can, in most programs, you can have a cross-tab of codes. So I can see on a big spreadsheet which codes are co-occurring. And that could 
maybe just spark an idea where I'm like, oh, why do I have so many co-occurrences of these two codes? Is my coding scheme redundant, or is there maybe something going on? And I double click on it, and I'll get all the results of my coding, all the text pieces that I coded, and I can look at it. Or what I often do is when I see, when I code different interviews, and there's different topics, and I see, oh, in interview five, that topic doesn't show up there. But I wouldn't see that necessarily if I wouldn't have it visualized in this table. So I can go back to the interview and see, is there really nothing in that interview, or have I worked sloppily? So there's really all kinds of neat things you can do with these visualization tools. And of course, you can export those tables, and you can crunch them in different programs. You cannot do quantitative analyses in QDA software. It doesn't, it's, doesn't have that scope. But the export is normally compatible with Excel or SPSS. Of course, the most obvious that I haven't mentioned yet is everything that's in your, in your database and a good QTA software can get out of the database. You can export your memos. You can export your whole interviews. You can export certain snippets of interviews. That's really, really crucial. 